Okay, so I'm working on a 2012 Mercedes C300. Uh, I have the common, um, what do you call it? Cross member failure. Um, looking online, there's not a whole lot of write ups on how to do it. I mean, there's a few here and there, uh, but figured I'd document it for anybody who's uh, going to try and do it themselves. Uh, Mercedes actually does not offer the part anymore. I did find a, I guess, a remanufactured cross member from uh, on eBay. Um, I haven't checked it to see if it works yet. Um, so we'll go ahead and, you know, that'll be a review on that. But here's kind of a quick how to. Um, I've already kind of started the car, but I'm at a point where um, if I start video recording from here, we can kind of get, get everybody caught up. So, all right, so here it is. So I got the wheels off. <clears throat> Pretty simple, 17 millimeter socket, pop the wheels off. Um, I got the inner fender liner, the inner fender liner out. Um, it was just a series of uh, little 10 millimeter um, plastic, um, I guess they're kind of like plastic nuts that hold it on. Then there was a couple of uh, um, pop rivets, little plastic pop rivets, pop them off. Um, these little wires, I unplugged them from here. I took pictures um, so I know exactly where they go to come back. Um, the reason why I unplugged them from here and uh, not on the cross member because, is because I can drop the whole thing uh, without having to worry about figuring out where to disconnect them. Um, the caliper, I've seen people unscrew the brake line. Um, I just took the caliper off. Doesn't look like it connects to the cross member at all, so we should be able to get away with not having to bleed the brakes. Um, so the caliper is off. Uh, let's go around to the other side. Um, pretty much the same thing. Caliper is removed, kind of hanging off to the side. Um, unplugged those as well. Also disconnected the battery to kind of um, eliminate any, any issues. I'm in the process of taking the plastic bottom off. So I can get to, there's covers for the cross member to get to the bolt, so I'll have to pop those off. So I'm gonna get the, get that taken off on both sides. And uh, yeah, then we'll worry about work on the next step. All right, I got the car uh, up off the ground. Got the plastic piece off this side. I have to remove this side. Um, but here's a close up view of uh, the part that broke, um, I hit a pothole, and it looks like there's some pretty pretty bad corrosion on the, uh, the cross member. So this goes where that hole is supposed to was or is. So yeah, pretty much trashed. Um, car is rust free. It was garage kept, um, but it is a northeast car, so you know we get plenty of salt. So. Um, Back to what I was doing, here's the plastic pieces to remove uh, the plastic panels. So I'm gonna remove the screws or the, the nuts. They're plastic, there's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then two eight millimeter screws to remove as well. So take those off and then I gotta drop it back down to get the lift out from under it so I can pop them off. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this side next. And then uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, and also the exhaust is removed. And then we'll get to the flex joint. All right, next. Okay, so got the plastic piece off of both sides. Um, also, just a heads up, uh, you can do this job without a lift. It definitely makes it a lot easier. Um, so I've seen it done a couple times on the videos and in some forums. People do this in their driveway um, without a lift. So don't let uh, a car be on a lift right here deter you. It's not something that needs to, that you need at your house. So, okay, so the plastic is off on both sides. As you see, the car is rust free. Um, this one is like a 2012, 117,000 miles. And 
yeah, we have that issue. So it it's really, you know, it doesn't matter really as much of the age of the car. Um, it's just a common problem. Mercedes does know about it. Um, from what I've been reading, they will, I think they're replacing them over in Europe free of charge, uh, but Benz USA has yet to acknowledge, um, I guess it being an issue here. So, but more and more cars are having these problems. If you're looking at buying a C300, it would pay to have it put on a lift and inspected. They always break at these joints here. Where these lower control arms go. You can see this one. Ooh. I mean, I'm literally just poking my finger through it. So this side hasn't failed yet, but it's about to. So very common problem. Um, just, you know, if you can get the car up on a lift, take a screwdriver and poke at the welds. Um, that'll be a pretty good indicator of the condition of the car. So the reason why I got to take the plastic pieces off, the plastic uh, shields, so we got to get these caps off. Um, everything's a 12 point socket and then that'll give us access to the bolt underneath. So pull this off, pull this off and that should give us access to the bolt. So there's one on each side. Um, I believe these, um, I'll get you the size here in a second once I find out what it is and then we'll go from there. <clears throat> Actually, I got to get this off. Uh, my donut is, or the flex seal. I don't know if it's ever been replaced. So um, I ordered a new one. Uh, supposedly it's a pretty common failure on these cars as well. So um, I'm gonna do that and the rear shocks while I have everything out from under the car. And then also the parking brake. So we'll take one step at a time. I'm gonna focus on getting the drive shaft disconnected now and then we'll work on the parking brake from what I gather it's pretty difficult um, getting it disconnected without breaking the plastic pieces so all right so we'll do the the flex uh, shit whatever that thing's called flex disc and then we'll move on to the park brake okay so to get the Flex disc off, uh, it's going to be a Torx T60 and a uh, 18 millimeter uh, wrench for the nuts on the back, T60 for the uh, Torx on the front. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those. There's uh, six total to, uh, to get this off, so knock that out now. Okay, so I need to put the car in neutral to get all the bolts. So. Before you disconnect the battery, uh, make sure you put the car in neutral so you can move the drive shaft around. So, All that. right. All right, so I found a nifty little trick. Pop this off. Down inside there, there's a yellow button. Push it down, and then you can move the gear lever if you've already disconnected the battery. And you don't want to plug it back in. So that's that's pretty easy. Um, basically just squeeze the, just squeeze the sides of that, uh, the leather boot, both sides that just pops out. There's a little yellow button, push it down and you can move the gear lever. Okay. So all the bolts are out of the flex disc. Um, got the parking brake released. Wow. What a pain. Let's see if I can explain this. So first things first. There's this little mount. Just kind of slide it out of that bracket. Okay, that'll that'll give this enough this enough movement movement back and forth. Where's it at? There's a cable. Where am I at here? Sorry. All right, that cable. Let's see if I can focus. That piece right there goes in here. All right, it's very hard. You're gonna pull this to the driver's side of the car as far as you can. Take a very small flathead screwdriver and just pop that 
out of that little groove, out of that square. You see where it kind of pops out there. Once you do that, this has plenty of movement. There is, uh, where am I at? Comes out to this side of the marker brake. On the other side, the passenger side, you're gonna have this little piece. Then there's two little tangs up, okay? Both sides. And in the middle, there's this little rubber isolator. Pop that out, okay? Once you pop that out, now you can move this back and forth and same, same rule applies. Just kind of slide it forward to you can pop the parking brake out. So, both are disconnected on both sides. This piece is the part that's actually connected to the car. You know, we can kind of just move it out of the way and then we'll kind of finagle the uh, cross member out of the way. Um, yeah, so the good news is I was able to disconnect everything and I didn't break any plastic clips, thank God. Um, so another thing that I do is when I remove everything, put everything in Ziploc bags. So this is all the plastic um, panels and pieces. I have a plastic bag for brake parts. So this is a pieces for the parking brake system and the brake system. So I'm gonna put that in there. Uh, kind of keeps everything slightly organized, so makes putting everything back together easier. All right, so parking brakes released. Okay. All right, so parking brakes released, um, flex seals disconnected, um, calipers are removed, wires are removed both sides. Um, I don't think there's anything else holding this thing in except for the main. Oh, huh. um, got to disconnect the shocks. All right, um, I'm gonna get to them from inside the trunk and stupid me, disconnected the battery again. And guess what? I didn't release the trunk. <laughs> All right, let me go put the battery back together, pop the trunk and we'll remove two top bolts, get the shocks out. And then I think it's the main cross member bolts and then we're ready to pull this thing down. All right, let me do that real quick. Okay, and again, jump to conclusions. Actually, don't need to disconnect the battery. Um, use your metal key from your uh, key fob and just pop it in there. Move it uh, 90 degrees and boom, trunk opens. Uh, let's see. I remember how to get to these shocks. All right, let me figure that out and I'll, I'll let you guys know. All right, so popped out the um, plastic pop rivet there, and there was another one. Oops, sorry. <clears throat> Under here, peeled this back. <laughs> oh man, excuse me. Peeled this back, and oh shit, I just realized my video is gonna be upside down. All right, so I peeled this back, and that will give you access to the top two two bolts so we're gonna knock those out they look like they're either 13 or 14s i'll let you know i'll get those knocked out and then um probably do the same on the other side there's a plastic button there one there so we'll knock those out pull the panels back and i'll pull those up let you know what uh what size they are okay all right so they're 13 millimeter uh bolts <clears throat> All right, ideally, uh, you'd have an empty trunk, but I'm lazy and I don't feel like cleaning everything out. So, let's see if I can do this one handed. Kind of show you what's going on here. So, pop that guy.
removed. There's a little bit more room. That's not fun. I forgot to tie, tie those up. Never mind, we'll have to tie the calipers up. All right. Oh, I can't do this with one hand. Okay. Build the faster side back. There it is. Bolts. One. Two. Oops. That's what I get for trying to do it one-handed. And uh, whoo, wait, yeah, I don't know why I'm so winded today. Got another bag, just be the shock parts. Cool, keep everything separate. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and get the car back up in the air and we'll take a look underneath and see what bolts we got to remove. Okay, car's back up in the air, and I'm pretty sure we have, uh, this is the main bolt here. That one's gonna come out. That one, we have to remove these, these two first on both sides. And then we can start removing that center because I believe this center bolt goes all the way through. Um, yeah, I think it goes all the way through. So we'll remove these two now. That way we don't forget. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the car, put I think a jack stand here, here. third one here underneath the diff and then I'll take the bolts out and then we'll just slowly kind of raise the car up until everything kind of falls falls out that's the plan all right so let me do that I'm going to take those four these four bolts out on or four well there's two one on each side take those out and then um, we'll lower the car down on three or four jack stands and then I'll take the main bolts out and then we'll raise it up. All right, we'll be back. Okay, just a quick update. Uh, the little bolts and the exhaust bolts are gonna be these star sockets. Uh, the size is an E12, all right? And the main ones, the larger ones, and uh, the larger bolts are an E16. All right, you want to make sure you get these. Um, I think somebody said you can use a 12 point um, sockets, but I tried that on the exhaust bolts and almost stripped them out. So you want to get these. These are, uh, I can't remember the exact term. Um, these are Husky, so I'm pretty sure I got them from, it's either Home Depot or Lowe's. Uh, we got them for a BMW that I worked on a while back, so it's good to have, if you have this car, it's good to have these. All right, E16 for the big ones, E12 for the little guys. I'm gonna knock these out real quick. Ooh, all right, cool. So it really was just these four bolts on all four corners, and uh, biggest thing, um, maybe when you're doing it on the floor um, without a lift, you can pivot it, um, but the drive shaft was kind of stuck 
it's got a little tang that it oops sorry it's got a little tang on the edge end here so as i was raising the car off of it kind of just kept jacking the rear subframe just to kind of meet an angle until it kind of slid itself out otherwise it was kind of getting hung up on it and uh, i was worried that i would end up damaging the drive shaft uh, or the transmission so just kind of take your time uh, yeah but here it is it is it's out of the car um, and uh ready for to be swapped over um so the next video will be um, me transferring the parts so right now i'm waiting on a new uh flex um sorry flex disc for the drive shaft and um i got new shocks i figured while i was in here i might as well replace a few items um before i put it together oh and i'm also going to drain the diff fluid out and put new diff fluid got everything through fcp euro um so they're usually pretty quick on shipping um this is my mistake i ended up ordering everything kind of late and uh Hopefully it'll be here next week, but let's start transferring these parts over to the new um, subframe, which is over there in that big box. So we'll go ahead and get that out, kind of see if they make sure they match. As long as everything looks like it matches, and uh, we'll, we'll start the process of tearing down and swapping things over. But yeah, so even this side, uh, where's my screwdriver? That's what you gotta look out for. So. We, look at that, here's the other side about to go. I mean, this is just I mean, this is just all weak. And so, supposedly they rot from the inside out. So, check these areas off of the I'm guessing that's a lower control arm uh, for Mercedes. So make sure you're looking at this this area in particular. I think around the body mounts is another failure point. You see, there's my. Um, that was the actual side that failed. So. I mean, it's completely detached. So, yeah. So next. <sighs> Sorry, I'm, uh, I'm winded for whatever reason. Uh, just getting ever cooled. <clears throat> um, but yeah, so again, there's the calipers. Um, there's the brake cable. I mean, and then these are the wires that plug into here. There, they're there. So basically, once you have the calipers off, the exhaust off, the differential disconnected and these wires i mean the whole thing kind of just four bolts and you're out i think i mean i've never done this before i've never done this job before and i think i have maybe five hours into it and everything's out granted the lift does make life a lot easier being able to put the car up put it down um you know rolling around underneath of it and you're not outside in the elements uh I will agree that makes life so much easier, but you know, you figure it's probably a six hour job to remove um, if you're doing this outside on uh, on jack stands. And you know, I, I don't know how much it's gonna take to transfer everything over. So we'll, we'll do that next. But I mean, I only have basic hand tools that I bought either from Harbor Freight or, you know, Home Depot or Lowe's. So, I mean, this isn't, this isn't a specialty job you don't need a Mercedes professional, um, you know, I'm not a mechanic, I'm just a DIYer. So if I can do it, uh, pretty much anybody can do it. So uh, hopefully you're getting something out of it. Um, and like I said, next step, we'll start transferring uh, the parts over to the, to the new subframe. So cool, pretty happy with it. Okay, it's been a couple days. Uh, still waiting on a few parts, I should have them in a couple hours, uh, I'm waiting on a set of shocks, the flex disc, and some diff fluid for the rear. Uh, I did end up ordering, let's see, it's 
hard to do things with one hand. It's gonna be upside down. Here we go. I did decide to order some new exhaust clamps. Mine were rusted out. I think you can replace the bolt, but I didn't feel like messing with that. So um, I also ordered a new set of body mount bolts. Um, one of mine stripped out a bit. Here we go. And then there's these uh, donut gaskets. I got two of those for the exhaust. I'm sure I could have reused mine, but uh, I don't want to have any exhaust leaks. Four body mount bolts. Um, <clears throat> and then some, some new Mercedes exhaust clamps. So that stuff came today. Oh, and uh, I stripped out the, the key for uh, what is it? A camber bolt. So I had to get one of the wa the washers for that. Um, so all that came yesterday, which is awesome. Um, I should have paid for the two day expedited shipping on the other stuff, but I, I thought it would come a lot quicker. But that's all right. It'll be here today. So let me give you a quick update on what I have. I'll show you the car. I think it was need, needed to show swapping everything over. I mean, here's the um, new, uh, what do you call it? It's slipping my mind. This is the new cross member. Um, I got all the parts off. So basically what I did is uh, I bolted everything that touched this, uh, the original cross member, and dropped everything out from under it. Um, and then basically stat this cross member on top of the rear and then just kind of lined everything back up and bolted it back in. Everything transferred over very easily. Um, nothing is tight yet. Um, I want to take a lot of the bolts and put them on the uh, wire brush just to clean them up so it's a little easier to torque everything down. And then uh, certain areas like the uh, what do you call it? Tie rod, uh, not tie rod, um, sway bar end links. You really want to tighten them down when you have the suspension compressed. So um, I will tighten these, the uh, control arms. I'll get those all nice and tight. Um, I'll get the, the rear end. Um, once I get it in the car, I'll snug up the rear end because I want to make sure everything lines up with the drive shaft. There is a little bit of play in that front mount. So I want to make sure everything lines up first before I tighten everything down. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, I did clean everything up the best I could. So I was like, figured while I was in here, I'd clean it up. Cleaned up all the dirt and grime. You can see there's still a little bit left, but this is filled with dust and dirt. Um, but really, the car is, is really clean. There's no rust anywhere. There's a little bit on the... Uh, fuel tank, I might do a little spot spray there, um, but I will coat everything with uh, some oil. I'll show you what I'm gonna use. Roger's a mess. Let's see, here it is. Get some of this stuff, especially if you live in the Northeast, anywhere where there's snow and ice, or not ice, snow and ice, snow and salt. <laughs> Uh, well, ice too, because they're going to salt the roads. Um, this stuff puts a nice protection on the undercoating. I use it on most of my vehicles. So, or especially if I do any um, swap out stuff, I try to coat the new stuff with this. And that'll, that'll help prevent some rust. And there's the other side, nice and clean. Yeah, again, 2012 C300. Uh, garage kept most of its life. Well, I mean... People before me garage kept it. It sits in my garage. Um, I do drive it daily. But yeah, it's amazing how how corroded and rusty these, these things get. And uh, big areas, I guess water sits in here. So I'm gonna spray fluid film 
up into these channels um, and it does it rots it from from the inside out so you know if you ever if you're gonna buy one of these cars definitely visually inspect these right here where the lower control arm meets right underneath this body mount these are really the weak points I think water kind of pulls in here and just rusts them out so take a screwdriver if you can poke in these areas around the edges here and you know you'll you'll find soft metal um, if it's there so yeah that's the update right now um, once the parts come I will we'll start assembling and uh, we'll get this thing put back together so hopefully uh, by the end of today the car will be put together tomorrow I'll go get it aligned and uh, we'll be back in business so I'll let you know okay so these are the parts that I ordered to do the job minus the, the subframe um, new flex disc two shocks <clears throat> two exhaust uh, donuts and little gaskets for the exhaust supposed to be two clamps but um, I accidentally only ordered one so I'm gonna I don't really have time to wait for another one to come in so I'm gonna try and make one of the old ones work I broke the bolt um, on both so I think I can just get a new bolt and I don't know we'll figure out that part um, I stripped out one of the keys for the um, camber bolts so I got one of those and four body mount bolts and the, um, what do you call it? Exhaust hangers. So I would, oh, and uh, some diff fluid. I may not, I probably won't do the differential fluid during this job. I was gonna knock it all out while I was in there, but I'm doing a trans service the next oil change. And uh, I'd like to have everything done at the same time. So I'll probably hold off on swapping out the diff fluid when I do that service. So, but yeah, this is uh, what I'd recommend. You're definitely gonna break the clamp bolts. Um, your donuts are gonna rip. So definitely get those. Your flex disc, if you haven't done it, um, it's a wear item. Eventually they crack and create vibrations. So you gotta take it apart to get the rear out. So you might as well replace it in your shocks if you haven't done them yet. I mean, now's the time to do it, so. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start putting everything um, back together. Here we okay. go. <clears throat> Just uh, coated the top portion of the uh, cross member with uh, the oil. I'm gonna let it dry a little bit because the stuff's nasty. Um, got the shocks in, just in there loose. Um, I've tightened up all the top bolts. I believe the torque spec was 39 and a half foot pounds and then Nine, and then once you tighten up the nine or 39 and a half, then it's a 90 degree turn. Um, I left the bottom ones loose because those are um, where you do your camber adjustments. I'm gonna let put the weight of the car on, let the suspension settle, then uh, raise it back up. Then I'll tighten everything down and then kind of set the alignment just enough to be able to drive it to the shop. But this is where I'm at now. Shocks are in. Um, I got the coating on the top. I've also sprayed coating inside here on both sides. And then there's some holes in the back. I'll show you. There's some holes in here, here. So um, these things come with a spray nozzle if you get the kit and you kind of just feed that line in there and just soak it uh, the best you can. And that'll, uh, that'll coat the inside and Hopefully for me and uh, the future owners of this car will not have any K-member issues or uh, K-member rear subframe issues. So um, the goal is to, you know, do what Mercedes should have done, you know, prevent the rust. All right. And uh, next step, we're going to drop the car down on top, get the donut put on. I got it loosely on the drive shaft now. So we're going to lower everything down and kind of set it in place. All right. Next step. All right, so here I am. I'm in my uh, C300. I'm driving to Mercedes to get the uh, four wheel alignment done. I'm sure some other places can do it. Um, I don't have any shops that I trust near me. Um, there is a Mercedes dealership that I think anything that I can't do, I bring it to them. They're really good and, and they treat us well. So, um, 
yeah so that's the end i'm sorry i didn't film everything but i mean it's pretty much in reverse you know as you as you take it apart you put it back together in the opposite way so um and real realistically everything went together i mean i hate to say it very easily um you know uh so we'll, we'll see we'll see what mercedes says when uh, it goes on the alignment rack hopefully uh, i did everything right hopefully the rear subframe is really close and we can get the wheels aligned hopefully nothing's out of whack with this uh you know non-oem um, subframe so i did i coated everything with um that oil uh, yeah, what is it? it's like an oil coating uh, that can uh, so everything on the other carriage is coated with that um, hopefully that subframe will outlast the car now you know the, the engine of the car so hopefully we get another couple hundred thousand miles out of it um, i plan on keeping this car for at least another fifty thousand i usually don't keep vehicles very long um I drive a long way for work so once they get start getting higher mileage and unreliable i usually uh, usually get rid of them so but yeah that's it um you know feel free to comment if you have any questions um if you have any questions on where I got the parts, everything uh, I got was from FCP Euro um, as far as like the shocks um, and the, sorry, this truck makes it was making a crazy noise. The shocks, the flex disc, uh, the uh, fluid, which I haven't done yet because like I said, I, I'm coming up on a big oil change and the trans service needs to be done. So I'm just going to do everything together. Um, and a couple other miscellaneous pieces. The subframe I got on eBay. I want to say it's RHD Automotive. I'll put it in the comment um, uh, of the actual seller on eBay. They said they're the manufacturer of it as well. Uh, it looks like every other um, subframe on eBay, so I'm sure they buy them in bulk from some Chinese manufacturer, I'm sure, and put their name on it. But anyway, it's uh, got a limited lifetime warranty on the part, so worth a try it was 950 bucks um i think uh, so i paid 950 for the subframe uh probably another four let's call it 500 and the shocks the flex disc the fluid and the miscellaneous parts from fcp euro um and then we'll get a 200 dollars alignment so i'll be in this about 1700 bucks uh fortunate for me the uh, insurance company they cover it so I'm using that money to, to get it fixed so um, I'm, I'm pretty far ahead uh, the dealer wanted to charge four thousand almost four thousand for um, everything I think it came at like 36 and you know after they find it you know other miscellaneous pieces that number is going to go up that was the uh, original quote so um, yeah so I, I feel like I did pretty good um, again, any questions, just leave a comment. I'll try to answer anything. But again, this is fairly easy. Um, just basically time consuming. If you just take your time and just you know, think ahead with your next step, um, it, it goes really smoothly. And I guess it also helps that my car has been a garage car since new. So it, it, besides the subframe, it wasn't severely rusted out. So the bolts everything came loose very nicely um, so I did I got I got really lucky there so um, again you don't need a lift uh, jack stands um, a nice floor jack and just maybe a helper and you, you can get this knocked out in a weekend or two uh, no problem so maybe a weekend to pull it out transfer everything over and then a weekend to put everything back in so all right um, I'll let you know. I'll do an update after the alignment. If all that checks out, then I would say this was a success. All right, see you.